Hey everybody, Scott Prezian here from Script Reader Pro. Today we're going to talk about writing descriptions in action, how to elevate your game there, going over some great examples. So we got a lot to chew on. Let's go. So we're going to get right into things today. And today we are going to be talking about your action and description writing right? The words on the page that are visually telling that story, pretty much everything outside of the dialogue. Now, writing your action description is you. That's what defines who you are on the page. Every script that you write is going to define pieces of your voice through your action and description. And there's many different ways to write it. Everyone has their own style. There's no right or wrong way to do it. There are no rules. Forget rules. There are expectations and those expectations that you are going to give us, your reader, your audience, a visually entertaining, engaging story that pulls us in, makes us forget we're reading, and makes us feel as though we're watching a movie unfold and that we're actually there. That's great screenwriting. So today we're gonna to look at a few different examples here. We're gonna look at The Sound of Metal, which is a very interesting first page and style. We're going to look at Palm Springs and a little excerpt from there. We're going to look at an excerpt from an action pulsing movement style in one of the Jason Bourne scripts, Bourne Ultimatum. And we're going to look at something that I put together just generically to show how you can take the same group of words, the same exact words, and put it together differently on the page and how it makes a different impact. Okay, so we're going to dive right in because we've got a lot of examples to cover. So get out your pens, get out your notebook, whatever you're going to do to learn from these great examples of writing that you can then put in your toolbox, help your style and move you through this crazy thing we call screenwriting. Okay, so let's go do that. The first script we're going to look at here is an excerpt from Palm Springs by Andy Ciara. Now I'm looking at this specific scene just to show you how some really great action and description works. In this highlighted section here, it's giving us a great look at who this main character is. He tucks in his Hawaiian shirt, slicks back his hair, licks his fingers and grooms his eyebrows, then pirouettes. Great description. It tells us a lot about this guy, just the way he does that cheesy move with his eyebrows. There's intrigue on her face, at least. Her aloof facade may be dropping, dot, dot, dot but she still declines. So the use of those ellipses there really just lets us kind of pause and hold in the air. And it's used sparingly. It's not after every sentence. It's just where it's needed to be. Same in this next section by this use of this dash dash here. Niall shrugs, cartwheels back to the center of the floor and continues letting loose with Sarah's family. High fives to Abe, a twirl for Pia, an undeniable master of this universe. That's such a great line and it tells us so much about who this guy is, where he is and why he exists here in the way that he does. And it sums up kind of the concept of the movie. And this really does give us that look into a character and does it in a way that's smooth and fast across the page. This is that idea of using one, two, three lines per section and not really going over that to make sure that our eye is moving down the page at a really fast pace. The next excerpt we're gonna look at is from The Bourne Ultimatum which is written by Tony Gilroy. And this is a writer that really did break into this whole dash dash movement. And I use this a lot myself when I'm writing specific action, but you'll notice here in this highlighted area that we are hitting action really hard, right? Motion, flat out, it's us. We're running, stumbling, breathing rushed, blood in the snow. It's hard not to get caught up in the movement of that, right? And it's really great to use in action. One thing I want to point out here is how he's got the super of Moscow in the middle of the scene, not in the beginning, not before anything happens, not before any visuals come to us. You put us in a moment and then you throw us that supered word on the screen to let us know where we are. It doesn't interrupt the action. It just enhances everything. And then again, blue lights from the distance, strobing through the night, rushing toward us, police cars, three of them, sirens howling as they bear down closer, faster until they whip past the alley. So there's a use of capital letters on important things, right? 
caps used well can really kind of punch us in the face a little bit and make us pay attention. But this style doesn't necessarily work all the time. It's great in action, but it doesn't necessarily work for us in a slower scene or a more dramatic scene. So you want to be careful when you employ this style. I wanted to throw this example in here from Sound of Metal by Darius Martyr and Abraham Martyr. And the reason so is because it's going against everything new writers are taught. You don't have large chunks of prose in your script. You don't fill paragraphs and paragraphs of information. And that's a great rule of thumb to follow, but there are times where you can go against that. And on the first page of this script, it gives us a whole bunch of text, but it's amazing text. Uh, it doesn't happen all throughout the script. It's just essentially this first page. <clears throat> but look at this highlighted section specifically. She flashes a quick glance toward him and Reuben unleashes bringing the sticks down upon his drums with pure demonic ecstasy. Like, how can you not feel that? It's so great. Lou leans in towards the microphone, relishing the moment. Her desperate and distorted scream fills the hall. The whites of Ruben's eyes flash as if igniting an erotic charge, this glorious being merging with him. So they're able to put all those words together, and it is short staccato sentences, right? But it moves us through at such an incredible pace, and it pulls us into the moment, and it gives us visuals and metaphors, and it's just beautiful writing that pulls you in and captures you. That is okay in this type of example, and not many writers would be able to pull this off. So it's not something you really want to do, especially if it's a fast-paced script with punchy action. You want to make sure that you are using other styles that way that make us get caught up in that moment and move down the page. So now I'm just going to show you this generic example that I wrote down and show you how the same words in different styles really can make a difference in how something affects a reader on the page. So this first example here is kind of how I would basically write it. Okay, so a small boy of about four years squats in a corner. He wears only a dirty, undersized, makeshift diaper. His hair is long, matted. His eyes blank. His body bone skinny and pale. The room looks much like a prison cell in a third world country. A paper thin mattress on an old iron bed and a foul, hastily thrown together potty chair in the corner. The only light comes from a slat of a window three inches high at the top of the wall. The boy holds a small red, white, and blue striped foam rubber ball. He lets it fall from hand to hand. So the way that is laid out there is kind of each shot that I think you're looking at as an audience member has its own paragraph, right? I'm not going over more than two or three lines and that's just the style that works well for me and works well for how I write and, and what I need you to see. So that is an example of basic screenwriting. This is what is normally going to be shown. This is what you see in the Palm Springs example, right? So let's look at the exact same words, exact same thing, just done in a different style. So here we're taking the same words and we are employing the da double dash aspect of writing. Now it doesn't really work in a situation like this because it's not action, it's not movement, it's visuals that we are being shown in a tiny little room, right? So just looking at that first section, a small boy of about four years squats in a corner, he wears only a dirty undersized makeshift diaper. Double dash, his hair is long, matted, eyes blank, his body bone skinny and pale. So it can work to move us across that page, but is it necessary? Does it make it work better than just being those sentences it had before? Not really. So there isn't a necessary need to have this specific type of scene written in that way. Now look at it if we do it the same way done as in the Sound of Metal example. It's a whole bunch of text all blocked together, but there's no real reason for it. I want people to get caught up in the visual. I want them to be pulled in, but I also want them to be looking around the room at the different areas, the different things in the room, getting a feeling of the atmosphere and the environment. So doing something like this, I wouldn't choose to do. It doesn't necessarily work well or make it work any better. So I don't think this is the best choice for a scene like this. And this is why you want to be careful with writing large amounts of description because it may not work or it may cause a reader to want to skip forward or feel overwhelmed by so much text on the page. So you want to be very careful with an example and choice like this. The last one I want to show you here is 
this new style that we see by a lot of writers. I see this a lot, actually, and it, it works well for some people and works not so well for others. It also depends on the genre. But something like this, you're essentially having every single sentence have its own line, right? So you're breaking it up piece by piece, sentence by sentence in one or two lines. And it definitely pulls your eye down the page, right? There's a lot of white space. There's a lot of movement. It makes you go. And this is great for scripts like thriller, horror, action, things like that, but not necessarily in a drama. If it's a dramatic movie, you want a lot of the time to make sure that your audience members are falling into a bit of a zone, right? That they are feeling things, that they're hanging in a moment, that they take a pause to really feel and emote with your characters and the moment you've put them in. So this type of action writing and description writing may not be for every genre. It may not be for every writer. It's tricky, right? Because you're you're doing a very stylistic thing and it may not be for everyone or in every moment. Um, but it's one of those options that are being picked up by a lot of writers. And if you do it well, it can work well. And there you have it. Really great examples that can show you how writing your action and description really makes your movie come alive. But at the same time, it can break your movie. If you don't use your words in a way that makes us feel something, that makes us move through those moments with your characters, it won't work. Screenwriting is writing. Writing first. You have to be a master of the word. And if you're going to succeed as a screenwriter and make people pay attention, it's not even about the story idea or the commercialism or marketability of your script. You'll ask any manager out there, it all comes down to the writing, how you execute that story, that concept, those characters. You want to make us feel that movie in those moments between those spoken words of your characters. Don't forget about our actual website and our service. If you're looking for great notes that are inexpensive and effective and get those notes that are encouraging yet challenging at the same time, that's what we're all about. So feel free to check us out, scriptreaderpro.com. And thanks for tuning in. Thanks for coming back. I hope you like what we're doing here. We are doing this to help you get better with every page. Feel free to subscribe to our channel. We've got lots of great stuff already on there and even more coming. You can watch other videos that we've put together. There's a lot of things that you can choose from that pair up with this. Keep writing. And until next time, Right hard. <laughs>